Dear students, this is Binu Marcus. Happy to meet you here. I am here to give you a plot line summary of Neela Padmanabhan's novel Generations. Neela Padmanabhan is a Tamil writer from Nagar Koyal. He is a bilingual writer. He writes in Malayalam and in Tamil. He has an undergraduate degree in physics and a degree in electrical engineering from Kerala University. As you can see, he's got about 20 novels to his credit, 10 short stories, collections, 4 volumes of poetry and about 17 essay collections. He was awarded the Sahitya Academy Award for Tamil for his novel Ilayudil Kalam. Generations uh, is the English translation of Tarai Muregal, which uh, came out in the year 1968. Before we go into the novel, we got to understand uh, something about the uh, Chettiar community known as the Seven Towns Chettiar or Elur Chettiar. Uh, the novel is replete with customs and practices of this community and Diravi is the central character in the novel who learns all about uh, their community from his grandmother Unna Malayachi who tells him in great detail about uh, their rich heritage. She also takes pride in the fact they were the descendants of uh, the seven towns Chetir. The seven towns included places like Iraniel, Palavadai, Papanapuram, Parakai, Midilam, Kolachal, and Tiruvangodu. The descendants of Kaveri Pupatatam are settled in Iraniel, and which is the hometown of the central character Diravi. Unnamalayachi narrates the legend popular in the community. It is about the story of Tangamme and Thayamme. They both belong to this place called Kaveri Pupatinam. The two sisters were both beautiful and witty. Their father one day comes from the king's court looking very depressed and distressed. He was distressed over a task given by the king. The king had given him a set of corals with no holes in it. He had ordered the Chitiya to bring it next morning as a necklace all strung together. The Chetyar felt defeated already because it was an impossible task. The two daughters Tangame and Thayame solved the problem and present to their father next morning other corals in the form of a necklace. The king is overjoyed and on finding out that the Chetyar's daughters had done this impossible task is very impressed and he proposes marriage. He wishes to marry them. The Chetiyar is deeply hurt. He cannot think of such a proposition at all, not even if it were the king. To marry someone outside their caste was unthinkable. Chetiyar goes and asks the king for time and decides to kill himself and his daughters. On the pretext of getting something down from the basement, he sends his two daughters on an errand. The two daughters, unaware of their fate, go down to the basement. The Chetiyar, as planned, seals the basement pouring mud. A few men of the clan assist him. The Chetiyar himself jumps into the uh, basement and dies along with his daughters. The curse and cry of the virgin sisters bring much devastation to Kaveri Popatinam. There is famine, fever and earthquakes. Some of the Chetiyar men, fearing the wrath of the king, escape from there, carrying their family deities, Nagamayan, Singavinayaka, and they settled in Eraniel. Chetiyars who settled in Eraniel and some other places came to, know, came to be known as Seven Towns Chetiyar. Chetiyar communities, like most of the communities in India, give importance to chastity and adhere to the ideals of the beliefs and customs peculiar to their community. This story highlights the significance attached to marriage as a symbol of honor in the community. The main characters in the novel are Diravi and his kin. Diravi's parents are Nagaru Pillai and Kuttiyamme. Unnamali Akka is the first daughter to this couple. Nagame or Naguakka is the second child to the couple and Visalam is the youngest daughter. Diravi is born third. Unna Malayachi, the grandmother, lives with them. The other characters 
involved in the main plot of the story are Papati and Kannupillai, their son Sivanda Perumal or Mukan. Sivanda Perumal is actually Sivananda Perumal. Sivanda Perumal has two wives, Nagamai and Vadivu. There is also another character by name Moses, Dosamme, Kutalam and the fishwife Velachi who is a newspaper of the village. The story goes like this. Uh, the novel is basically about Diravi's angst and struggle to bring his second sister's life in order. Nagamai is a mute victim of the patriarchal community. Nagamai is hardly 16 and a half years old when she was married and discarded by her husband within just six months of marriage. From the age of youthful 15 to an adult teacher, the novel meanders in depicting the quest in Diravi's mind about the complicating familial ties that uphold some and shatter some others. The rigid customs and rituals begin to lose their significance as Diravi witnesses the follies in it. Nagamai is an epitome of suffering. Her life becomes a question mark and a version of the story as a wife of Sevanda Pirumal is left unsaid by the novelist. The novelist has left it so as to substantiate the fact that woman is just a commodity in marriage. There are actually so many odds against Sevanda Pirumal, yet the marriage materializes because the horoscopes of Sevanda Pirumal and Nagamai match. One thing was that Sevanda Perumal was over 35 years of age and he had not been married for so long. He, his father was actually a deceased man living away with some other woman of some other community. Diravi's parents and relatives go on with the proposal just because the horoscopes match and also because this is a very nice alliance. Actually, Papati had sweet talked Unnamalayachi in agreeing to the proposal. Though Kutiyamme had her initial fear, knowing full well about Papati's nature, she yields to the temptation because her daughter will have a better life. Sevanda Perumal blames the family of Naguaka, saying that they got her married knowing full well that she was not a woman. Nagamai is accused of not being a woman. This reason is not tangible. It cannot be solved like any other problem because it strikes at the very base of marriage. This charge is a lie. But when it comes from her husband, it is simply accepted and his discarding his wife is justified. Nagarupilla is shocked beyond words. He had conducted the marriage with great difficulty. This acquisition is hard to bear and a disgrace not only to Nagamai but also to the family. The matter is brought to the village trustees but Nagamai does not get justice because the charge against Nagamai is against her very identity as a woman. It is a very embarrassing charge with one's gender in question. Even the option of going to court is discouraged. Kannupillai, Sevanda Perumal's estranged father, suggests that Nagamai should get justice and the case should be brought to court. Nagarupillai, her father, is unconvinced. Nagarupillai dismisses the idea of going to court, afraid of the consequences, as the chances of Nagamai returning to her husband will be closed forever. Nagamai becomes a source of worry and anxiety to the already economically weak family. Diravi, her only brother, is exceptionally upset too. He is saddened by the face of silent wound that everyone bears at home. His grandmother breaking down in tears, his father bursting in anger and his mother's, mother's darkened face upsets him. Most of all, it is Nagavaka's sorry state that bothers him much. Diravi is also subject to taunt when his friends deride his sister. Kutalam, an accomplice, is the only person who takes care not to wound Diravi. Diravi begins to feel comfortable with Kutalam. Even before any settlement about this marriage could take place, Papati arranges for a second marriage for her son. It is secretly conducted. It would have been alright if Sevanda Perumal had openly married for the second time. Second marriages were a norm in the society. 
Nagara Pillai thinks that Nagamai must go back to her in-law's house. A daughter once married becomes a property of the husband. Nagara Pillai says as he leaves her at Sevanda Perimal's house, This is your wife. Whatever you do with her is your affair. He is, however, unhappy about leaving her there. But more than that, he fears a disgrace and scoff from the community if she continues to stay with them. Nilachi, the fishwife, brings in the news that Nagamai's condition is pitiable in her in-law's place. Before the family decides to bring her back, Sevanta Perimal brings her back, warns her parents not to send her back where she does not belong. Diravi completes his SSLC in the meantime successfully and he finds himself a job in a school. Later on, he is not paid well there. Later on, he finds a government job at Kirangi. He befriends a senior teacher there by name Moses who notices that Diravi is often very silent and remorseful. He tries to cheer him up, telling him that it is rather unnatural for a man of 20 to be so withdrawn. Moses is a very congenial man. So, Diravi can't but feel compelled to share his sister's predicament. He opens up to him, but he is unable to say exactly the reason for his sister's plight. The kind of charge against his sister is not only embarrassing, but a disgrace on womanhood itself. It is a seemingly unverifiable charge. No one was able to help their family because of such an acquisition. The village trustees were helpless in asking Sevanda Perimal to take her home. Moses says that Nagamai can have a checkup and matters could be straightened out. Sevanda Perimal himself had said that she should be taken to a doctor, but no one had bothered to do that earlier. Nagamai has been having a fainting fits, so Diravi takes her to Dr. Rosa May under this pretext. Dr. Rosa May is Moses' wife and she certifies that there is absolutely nothing wrong with Nagamai. Diravi gains confidence and is happy about his sister and is upset over the false charge that had made his sister wallow in sorrow for nearly 6-7 to seven years and suffer the blame for the broken marriage. Diravi meets Sevanda Perimal with a plea to take his sister back. Sevanda Perimal tells Diravi that the chapter of his marriage with his sister is closed. He even says that it is pointless for Nagamai to wear his thali. Diravi had been patiently telling him that he knows the truth about Sevanda Perimal and it will be a disgrace to him if Nagoka is married again and bears children. Yet, he pleads with him knowing that Sevanda Perimal is in capable of fatherhood. Kuttalam is actually a school dropout and is older to Diravi and is a good companion. As a character, Kuttalam is a social misfit and rumour had it that he visited prostitutes and drank a lot because the situation at home was not favourable. He didn't have any means of income either. But things changed with his grandmother's death and his father's paralytic attack. He took care of his father whom he had once hated. His life and prospects were getting better and soon he was going to open a shop at Eraniel. Whenever Diravi met Kutalam, Kutalam would inquire about his sister. Whenever Kutalam referred to his sister as Nagu, Diravi was made to feel uncomfortable. Kusalam, his younger sister, gets a proposal. Though there is no means to conduct the marriage and with Nagamai at home, Diravi's father hesitates to take proposal forward. Diravi, however, convinces his father and also suggests ways and means to conduct the marriage. He says that they could will the house to Visalam and sell some land to the groom's family and conduct the marriage without much hassle. Diravi is keen on Visalam's marriage because of the marriage he has planned for Nagavaka. Everything goes according to his plan. Visalam is married. One day, when his father was alone in the field, Diravi makes his father understand Nagamai's predicament and what he has done to clear her name. And he also expresses his desire to get her married to Kutalam. Nagarupilla is unable to con commit anything. Though as a father, he feels proud of Diravi's love for his sister, but he is worried much about the reaction of the community. Diravi convinces him that the community has not stood by their side Nagavaka was dumped by her husband and it is futile to
to give them any importance with the marriage fixed between nagamai and kutalam everyone is happy except unnamalayachi she is a woman of old beliefs and customs she finds it difficult to accept the fact that nagamai will be married for the second time and that too with kutalam of another community it is because of her failing health the marriage that was supposed to take place in the month of avani is postponed to thai in the meantime people of the village have heard of the marriage and everywhere people were busy passing comments and attempts were also made to convince kutalam against marrying a discarded wife kutalam has scant respect for the community and trustees he is willing and ready to marry nagamai hardly when there were three days for the wedding dhiravi was finding it very difficult to sleep he was tormented by a very bad dream when dhiravi was woken up bhutan he had to rush the temple where this sulamatan festival was happening in the meantime there was rumor that sevanda perumal had become insane and whenever he saw dhiravi or kutalam he would stare at them in rage during this festival of sulamatan people used to be possessed of the deity ponnappan a villager was possessed and sevanda perumal in a frenzy snatches the whip and leaves from ponnappan and jumps into an abandoned well vadivu his wife runs to puttalam's house and pleads with him to save her husband who had fallen into the abandoned well kutalam rushes to the spot in, and jumps into the well to save him for vadivu's sake people wait in anxiety as it takes a long time for kutalam and sevanda perumal to come police arrive and haul out the corpse of kutalam dhiravi feels devastated sevanda perumal is hauled out next he is alive by morning news spreads that it was actually a trick played by sevanda perumal and his wife vadivu to safeguard the honor of their community and safeguard his image as well sevanda perumal will definitely go scot free after this because he is known to be mentally deranged dhiravi and his parents and nagwaka leave the village for shengota where he had been transferred so the four of them leave the town never to return again neela padmanabhan concludes thus the family of four appeared more dead than alive after the tragic end to kutalam the novel closes just as it begins with the family paying respects to their family deity singa vinayaka dear students that is the broad outline of the story of generations by neela padmanabhan i have given you the main plot of the story we will be discussing the theme the subplot and some relevant questions that will make us understand and appreciate the novel generations thank you for listening bye from me now